Hey everyone, you all know Pit, right? Funny guy, can't read. He was a ring once, and a dog, and a little girl. Uh, uh anyways. He actually says something different in his Pelotonist Guidance against Cloud if you're playing in stamina mode. One of his limit break moves is called Finishing Touch. It doesn't do much damage, but it can launch you off the stage in a split second. Now that I know Cloud's tricks, this one's in the bag. It doesn't do much damage, but it can launch you off the stage in a split second. Not a problem. We're playing stamina mode. I'm pretty sure this is the only time a Palatator's Guidance changes depending on what mode you're playing. Anyways, welcome back to more useless Smash Facts, brought to you by the guy that notices all these things even though he really shouldn't. You probably already knew that Snake's Kodak calls are taken directly from Super Smash Bros. Brawl, meaning that every character that wasn't in Brawl straight up doesn't have one. This causes some inconsistencies with Jigglypuff and Sonic, where the Colonel and Otacon still refer to the game as Brawl. Sounds pretty irresponsible if you ask me. Takes all kinds, Snake. Especially here in Brawl. Do you have any idea how excited people are that he's here in Brawl? What makes this even weirder is that they did cut out a part of Link's codec calls where Otacon mentions his claw shot. This is because in Ultimate, Link no longer uses his claw shot. There's also an easter egg like this with Fox and Falco on every Star Fox stage. Even Wolf gets one. Only on Lilat Cruz though. What the characters say depends on who activates it, and in Lilat's case, also where the stage currently is. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is the fact that these conversations are unchanged from Melee and Brawl. Meaning that BAM! There he is. Good old Brawl Wolf. Wait, uh, does this mean they're like, different characters or something? By the way, Fox is the only character who's had a different voice and design in every Smash game. Fire! 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 And Jigglypuff is the only character who's never had a different voice in Smash. It's always been the exact same voice since Smash Bros. 64. They were just a lot more compressed in the original game. Luigi's 8th alternate color has a yellow L on his cap, even though it is cyan on the in-game model. Similarly, Ganondorf's 5th alt shows the metal being golden on this render, even though it's silver in-game. And very similar to that, Daisy's 7th alt shows a golden crown in the render, even though it is silver in-game. And another one that I guess I should mention is that Mr. Game Watch is doing his up tilt in his render, but when he does it in gameplay, he changes appearance. Not really something I would call an error, like the other three I mentioned, but it's still kind of funny, I guess. The Yusuke Kitagawa spirit fight is against Krom, which is probably because they both have blue hair and wield a sword. Or, what would be a more fun reason for these two to be linked, is that they both have the same Japanese and English voice actors. Do you think they're hiding something from us? Another spirit fact is that the Mr. Sandman spirit is a rank 3 spirit, and Macho Man is a rank 4 spirit, even though Sandman is the champion of the world in Punch-Out Wii, so he should be stronger than Macho Man, since he beat him and all. There's probably a lot more cases like these, but I just wanted to point this one out since I thought it was funny. On Smashville, there's a clock on the town hall that actually displays the current time, based on your Nintendo Switch's time and day settings. There's a clock on the town hall in the town and city stage as well. It of course goes away when the stage goes to the city, but fear not, because there's also a clock on a building there that displays the time. And the final clock, that I could find, that accurately displays the time is the one on the Umbra Clock Tower stage. The one on the floor, that is. All these clocks update in real time, by the way, and I think that's pretty cool. The only other clock I could find is one of the drawings that show up on the PictoChat 2 stage, but that one doesn't accurately display the time. Pikachu, Mewtwo, and Dr. Mario are the only characters that gained the ability to wall jump at some point. Wall jumping was introduced in Melee, and none of these characters were able to wall jump in that game. Pikachu gains the ability to in Brawl, and Mewtwo and Dr. Mario in Smash 4. Interestingly, Pichu was able to wall jump in Melee, even though Pikachu couldn't. But now, all four of these Pokemon are in Ultimate and they're all able to wall jump. Also, the fact that Pichu could wall jump in Melee and then Pikachu could starting in Brawl, makes some people believe that the Pikachu in Brawl is actually the Pichu from Melee, but evolved. That and the fact that Pikachu can only learn Volt Tackle, his final smash, before evolving from Pichu. And that one of Pikachu's alts in Brawl has the blue goggles from this melee Pichu alt, which Pikachu didn't have in melee. But this is useless Smash facts, not useless Smash theories, so I'm gonna stop talking about it. Now it's time for some weird sound test facts. 
Every character with an alt where they're the opposite gender has two separate voice clips of the announcer calling out their name. Except Corin for some reason. Pokemon Trainer! Pokemon Trainer! And even the three Mii Fighters. Me Brawler! Me Brawler! You know how the announcer will actually say the name of Alf instead of Olimar when you're selecting him? Olimar! Alf! My guess is that for some reason, the same thing happens for all these fighters when selecting their opposite gender alts. But not for Corin, for whatever reason. Maybe the announcer also doesn't like Corin. There's a separate section for Bayonetta in her Bayonetta 1 and 2 outfits. The Bayonetta 1 outfit has one more voice clip than the other. You might think that they say completely different lines or something, which is a very reasonable expectation, but you'd be wrong. The only difference is this voice clip of her saying, boom. Boom. She doesn't have this voice clip in her Bayonetta 2 outfit. In gameplay, she has a chance of saying this during her forward smash. Boom. But the thing is, she can also say this in her Bayonetta 2 outfit. Boom. Even though the sound test would make you believe otherwise. So... What's the point in this? I don't... I don't... I don't get it. It's probably an error, actually. I don't think there's a difference between the voice clips of these two alts, yet they're still separate in the sound test like other characters that do have different voice clips for their different alts. Pit and Dark Pit will actually change how they're holding their bow depending on what move you use last. They will either hold it as one piece or as two pieces. Similarly to how Bayonetta changes her idle stance shortly after doing some attacks. Okay. I normally don't like talking about the coding of a game in my videos, but I'll make an exception for these next few facts because I think they're super funny. Peach and Daisy have code in the game for being able to pull a beam sword with down special, like in Melee and Brawl. The thing is, the chance to get this is set to 0%. Bamhai is Bamam, Dosai san is Mr. Saturn, and Beam Sword is Beam Sword. And these numbers are like the chance to get them or something. I don't know, this is kind of confusing. This was the same for Peach in Smash 4, by the way, and when they made Daisy in Ultimate, they copied Peach's data, and when they made adjustments, they didn't change this. By the way, according to Smash Ultimate, the power of a turnip depends on its mood, meaning that looking at a turnip when you pull it to see what type it is can officially be called a vibe check. <clears throat> uh, another fact on coding is that the following characters all have code in the game to be able to glide, like in Brawl. Meta Knight, Charizard, Pit, these three characters were able to glide in Brawl, Dark Pit? Makes sense, he's Pit's Echo Fighter, so they probably just copied the code and never removed it like with Daisy. And... Ridley! A character completely new to Ultimate. He doesn't have an animation for it though, just the code. So I guess if you were to enable it, he would just T-post through the air or something. This makes me believe that they might have planned to bring back lighting in Ultimate, but scrapped it pretty early on. Or that Charizard was used as a base to build Ridley off of, since their gliding code is almost exactly the same. It's possible for all 8 inkling colors to be on screen at the same time, while having only one inkling in the match. Can you guess how? Why, it's with the other 7 players being Kirby, of course. Yeah, Kirby gets different ink colors than the inkling already in the match, of course. Even though his hair is always that of the orange inkling. I don't know why they couldn't just have 8 different color hats for Kirby with this ability. Seeing him with orange inkling hair while shooting blue ink is kinda cursed. Anyways, it's kind of a trend with these videos that I post a confusing question on Twitter that I could answer in the next video and that the first person to get it right would get a shoutout. In said video. I did the same thing this time with this question, and apparently I am stupid because this question was so easy that uh, quite a few people got it. Quite a, uh, quite a lot of people actually. Um, the first person to get it was Tenkai the Mixion. So congrats to you my friend, you win. Next time I'll post a harder question, I promise. Alright, now let's end this with... <sighs> I knew this day would come. In Useless Smash Packs Part 1, I stated that Pokemon Trainer has the most victory screen animations at 18, with different combinations of male and female Pokemon Trainer and Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard. Then in Useless Smash Packs Part 2, I said that Dr. Mario has the most at 6,563, because of the different color pills he can get. But then later I corrected myself saying he still actually has 3 because the animation stays the same, regardless of the pill color. That's what I based this on. Victory screen animations, aka the amount of different animations they can perform in their victory screens. For instance, male and female Inkling have different animations in their victory screens, while male and female Corin use the exact same animation, just with a different model attached to it. 
which is why Inkling has 6 victory screen animations and Corrin just 3. Now why am I bringing this all up? Joker. He's back to claim the spotlight in one of my videos yet again. Joker can finish the match with his final smash if the opponent is at a high enough percent, which will then turn into the victory screen. Characters that get KO'd with the final smash will stay on the victory screen. And now you might see where I'm going with this. Alright, time to explain this final smash in way too much detail. First of all, Joker can only get this victory screen with a maximum of 4 other characters in it. Any more characters than that will just not get KO'd. Kinda weird, but it is how it is. I tried looking for what determines how the characters will be placed from left to right. I tried stuff like changing the player count, the position when hit with the final smash, to percentage, but it always seems to be random. Regardless of how it changes, it does change. Also, I tried out different Echo Fighters, different costumes, and semi-clones with similar models to see if they share the same animations. And get this. Male and female Wifa Trainer is the only case I could find where the same character has a different animation. All the other ones I tested do share the same animation between all two characters, which include Samus and Dark Samus, Peach and Daisy, Marth, Lucina, Krom and Roy all have the same one, Mario and Dr. Mario, Pit and Dark Pit, Ness and Lucas, Olimar and Elf, Male and Female Villager, Male and Female Robin, Bowser Jr. and all the Koopalings, Ken and Ryu, Male and Female Corrin, Soldier First Class and Advent Children Cloud, Bayonetta in her Bayonetta 1 and 2 outfits, Male and Female Inkling, Simon and Richter, and all hero alts. Yeah, for some reason, WeFit Trainer gets special treatment here. I mean, okay. Anyways, this means that for this experiment, we can completely ignore the existence of Dark Samus, Daisy, Lucina, Krom, Roy, Dr. Mario, Dark Pit, Lucas, Ken, Richter, and every single alt except male WeFit Trainer. Also, here's some other stuff I found out by testing things. A character's oof ouch pain hurt animation every time they get hit is always exactly the same. The second ice climber never shows up whether they get hit or not. Luma never appears in the final smash. Bowser Jr's clown car will always show up even if he's initially hit without it. And two other things that are not important at all are that Robin holds either the Levin or Bronze sword depending on what he's holding when he's hit, and that Inkling's ink tank actually has a different amount of ink in it depending on how much they have when hit. But those two things don't matter, I just thought they were interesting. Okay, so that leaves us with 72 different animations that can play in the background, which can fill 4 slots, and the same one can be in 2 or more slots at the same time. So I did the math, and the way we gotta figure this out is that we do 72 times 72 times 72 times 72, which gets us a number. Then we do the same thing but with 3 times for the version with only 3 slots filled. So that's 72 times 72 times 72, which also gets us a number. Then again, but twice for two slots filled. So 72 times 72, which gets us, you guessed it, a number. And then simply for one slot filled, which is of course just 72. Then we take the first number, plus the second number, plus the third number, plus 72. Which brings us to a number. Which we add the four normal victory screen animations Joker has to, you know, these three and his unique victory pose in team battles. And that, finally, brings us to the amount of different victory screen animations Joker has in total, which is... 27,252,364. I did the math myself, and it took me about three hours. No, really, I am awful at math. I mean, do I look like a smart person to you? I later ended up asking a lot of my way smarter friends, and they all said I was correct, so I'll take their word for it. All the people that helped me are thanked in the description. So yeah, Joker definitely has the most amount of victory screens. Or does he? You see, I said victory screen animations, and technically the victory screen animation doesn't start until game appears on screen. And at that point, the animation is just an image waving in the wind like a flag. Right? Honestly, I don't know the specifics, but it doesn't really matter, this number is still ridiculously high either way. I'll leave it up to you to decide for yourself if you think these all count as separate animations or not. Well, that's it. The last patch, 6.0.0, came out after the script for this video was done, so I was scared that they changed some facts that appear in this video, but luckily they didn't.
Anyways, Terry Bogard is a lot of fun and I do have a fun useless smash fact for him, but I think I'll save that for another time. And there will be another time. So subscribe if you want to catch that. Let me know what your favorite useless smash fact was in this video, or if you have any useless smash facts of your own, or if anything I said in this video was wrong, you know the drill by now. By the way, I haven't said it on my channel yet, but thank you guys so much for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. The next goal is of course 1 million, but who knows how long it'll take before I reach that. Thanks for watching, and I hope your day is okay, Busta Wolf. Um, goodbye. Hello?